hello friends in this video we will be discussing about evaluation of the fourier transform of a gaussian function okay the flow of the video will be like this first we will define the continuous time fourier transform and then we will try to find the dif uh, evaluate the differentiation in time domain property and then we will discuss about differentiation in frequency domain property of the fourier transform and finally we will evaluate the fourier transform of the gaussian function using these two properties okay so first let us define as usual the definition of a continuous time fourier transform for any signal x of t fourier transform is defined as x of g omega equal to integral minus infinity to infinity x of t e power minus j omega t dt now if you replace omega with zero we get x of j zero which is equal to the this e power minus j omega t will become one and hence we get this expression which is nothing but the area of the time domain signal x of t and also the inverse fourier transform is defined as x of t equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity x of j omega into e power j omega t dt so we will utilize the definition of the fourier transform and the value of the fourier transform at omega equal to zero and the inverse uh, fourier transform definitions to evaluate the fourier transform of the gaussian so before we proceed to that first let us try to define let us try to prove the differentiation in time domain property so for any signal x of t with fourier transform x of j omega differentiation in time domain property is defined like this so what does it mean if you differentiate the signal in time domain it's a in fourier domain it would be equal to multiplication of x of j omega with j omega so let us prove this which is very simple so we will take the help of the inverse fourier transform which is defined like this which we have already seen now what happens if you differentiate x of t so note that differentiation of x of t with respect to time is same as 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity note that x of j omega doesn't have t term so it will be a constant the only term which is you which will be which can be differentiated is e power j omega t so if we differentiate this with respect to time we get j omega into e power j omega t and after doing some in proper assembling we get this equation so clearly if you look at this equation this is again looking like the inverse fourier transform of the function which is inside the square bracket and that is given to be d by dt of x of t so from this we can see that the fourier transform of d by dt of x of t is j omega into x of j omega so next let us proceed to the differentiation in frequency domain property of the fourier transform and again as usual if x of t has x of j omega as the fourier transform now if you multiply x of t with the t in time domain so that translates to j times differentiation of the fourier transform so again to prove this we will take the help of the definition of the fourier transform which is given here now if you differentiate this x of j omega with respect to omega so what happens note that we have omega term only here so if you differentiate this with respect to omega we get minus jt x of t into e power minus j omega t dt so clearly this equation is seen as the fourier transform of the function in the square bracket which is nothing but minus jt x of t so clearly after multiplication of this equation with j we get j d by d omega of x of j omega would be j into minus j is plus one and hence you get t x of t e power minus j omega t. again this clearly tells that this equation is nothing but fourier transform of t x of t and that is given by j into derivative of x of j omega now we will utilize these two properties to evaluate the fourier transform of the 
Gaussian function. So Gaussian function is defined as x of t equal to 1 by root 2 pi e power minus t square by 2. Then its Fourier transform is given by x of j omega equal to e power minus omega square by 2. So by looking at this, we can easily see that Gaussian will have itself as the Fourier transform. So what do we mean by that? The Fourier, the, the, if you in time domain, if the signal is Gaussian in Fourier domain, also the signal would be Gaussian. So we will try to prove this by utilizing the properties of differentiation in time domain and differentiation in frequency domain of the Fourier transform. Okay, so let us again take x of t to be 1 by root 2 pi e power minus t square by 2 which is a Gaussian function. Now if you differentiate this we can easily see that you will get 1 by root 2 pi e power minus t square by 2 multiplied with minus t and hence you get minus t into x of t in the left hand side is the derivative of x of t and right hand side is multiplication of x of t with t so this clearly reminds us about left hand side we can use differentiation in time domain property and right hand side we can use differentiation in frequency domain property so once we go into Fourier domain left hand side would become j omega into x of j omega and right hand side would be minus j times d by d omega of x of j omega by simple changes we can see that we can write this equation as dx of j omega by d omega equal to minus omega into x of omega why because the j will get cancelled and if you send negative sign that side you will get this equation now by bringing x of j omega to the right hand side and to the left hand side and sending d omega to the right hand side we get this equation and by integrating this equation we get logarithm of x of j omega would be equal to minus omega square by 2 plus k so now if you take anti logarithm of this equation we see that x of j omega would be c times e power minus omega square by 2 where c would be equal to e power k but how do you evaluate the value of c so the value of c is can be obtained by replacing omega with 0 so if you replace omega with 0 you will get c times 1 which is equal to c but we have already seen that x of j omega is nothing but area of the function x of t also we have proved previously that area of this gaussian function is equal to 1 and from this we see that ax equal to 1 but ax equal to c and hence c also turns out to be 1 and from that we can replace the c with 1 which will give us x of j omega equal to e power minus omega square so as a summary we can see we have proved that the Fourier transform of this Gaussian function is also another Gaussian function which is given here okay so hopefully this helps you thanks very much for your time